Am I hallucinating? Or has everyone I expected to get this far lost? Let me introduce the Blue Protoss player in this I Am Katowice 2023 StarCraft II World Championship Semi-Final. Try fitting that in the title. I give you Hero. Not the player that Protoss deserves, but the one it needs right now and the only one left in the World Championships, but up against the biggest underdog to make it even close to this far. Coming in ranked 21st overall. One game from being knocked out in the group stage. He just took down Raynor, the best Zerg left in the tournament by all sorts of stats and standards, but it's Oliveira, formerly known as Tom, the Chinese Terran player, making a massive splash. He did a reverse sweep against Raynor. After a, a rough 2-0 start, he managed to turn it around and actually... Uh, his commentary after was he, he took a break after game two. Uh, he, he took a bathroom break, as players are able to do, but instead just washed his face, kind of settled down a bit, and he came back and he won three games in a row. You know who told him to do that, apparently? It was innovation preparing him for the tournament. Uh, Oliveira himself did not expect to get this far, but applying that and coming in against Hero here, that means he's got some preparation. That means he's ready to take on the best of the best. He took down Raynor, who's technically ranked higher than Hero, though completely different matchup. And while Oliver has shown a lot of strength in Terran versus Terran and Terran versus Zerg, there really aren't that many Protoss out there. Hero, the only one in the top eight and the top four. So, well, if you like Protoss, Make sure to like this video. If you don't like Protoss, well, I can get on board with that as well. Either way, uh, hopefully you subscribe to the idea of good games for the fans. Thank you for tuning in with my commentary here for the World Championships. Hope you enjoy it. I think I will. Let's get into it. The first game is on Altitude, a map that this is a, one of the handful of games throughout the whole tournament we saw. Uh, Oliveira and Hero, neither of them vetoing it. Uh, it was the least played map of the World Championships, but here we are, kicking things off. Maybe a bit of a, uh, just get it out of the way so we don't have to worry about it later. Oliveira's opting for a two racks starter. Stim is in production. It is a bit of, it's not quite a um, bio play, like a bio all in on, on two base. In fact, it's uh, a bit more factory oriented. He did get the Cyclone, which is nice coverage against early Stargate and any extraneous units. And having access to that factory, of course, means you can get the Starport. So it looks like this is kind of an old school, middle of the road style here, as he's going for three racks with uh, reactor medevacs behind. Walking through the frozen river here. We have Hero with a handful of Stalkers, not to neglect what he is doing. Interesting setup. He did Reaper Wall, but he put all his tech on this one uh, I, relatively well-protected pylon. If this pylon goes down, well, Hero's likely already lost the game, but Robotics Facility, there is Blink, and a War Prism on the way across. Hero gonna try to really lay on the pressure early. How much does he know? He saw a tech lab. He might think there are tanks, but instead he's going to be up against a heavy bio play. I'm not sure if that's better or worse for Oliveira here. As a tank or two can really help to zone out any of these early pressures. Ooh, yeah, now Hero sees indeed no tanks, but instead just a bunch of bio. The war prism was spotted. A couple stalkers into the natural. One marine gonna strongly suggest they leave the premises. But the Stalkers realize that that's not nearly enough to scare them. Prism looking for an opportunity, not finding it so far. A single turret on the edge. Gonna zone out. Rarely does a single turret kill the Prism, but it might soften it up so Marines, a Viking, a Cyclone can deal with it. A Widowmine well placed. A lot of options, but none of them here right now. Combat shield done. Plus one done, but the Stalker's already getting a lot of damage. The Blink Stalker's getting chased down outside the third. Ten SCVs, though, as Hero is sniping off the economy. And that brings Oliveira down to just 
38 of them. Oh, tank comes out. SCVs to hold the line for now. Stalkers sliding around in the prism. 16 SCVs in total. The bio army is just headed to the other side. A bit of a base trade, though. Neither player. Uh, Hero doesn't really have enough to continue to attack, and he needs to defend. He just has blank stalkers, not well known for their ability to take a heads-up fight. Shield battery overcharge, just grinding through, unloading with the Marines and Marauders. Oliveira is stirring up the ramp and tearing through the defenses right now. Two medevacs more than enough to keep these units intact. The single Colossus steps down for the ramp, but uh, it just crumbles immediately. Uh, Hero has no units. You, no, you need units. They're very important. I, I have more, more news at eight, but he's just dead. Oliver just walks up and kills him. Uh, that wasn't in the script. Well then, I don't, I don't really know what Hero expected to accomplish with just blink stalkers against the bioplay. But that, I, let me tell you, that is. I haven't really seen that style out of Terran before, at least not recently. That's why I said it reminded me kind of of an old school style where you you would go with the factory early and then uh, just go straight up in the Metavax with Stim. It honestly, it reminds me more of like a Wings of Liberty style because it, with Legacy of the Void, the economy is getting higher in the early game meant there was more time. Uh, to get tech and production behind for Protoss, so it made it harder to do sort of later bio timings. But it worked out just fine there. Hero saw it and just went anyway. So now we got the... Uh, now we have the information of what happens when you go blink into that sort of build. You just don't have any... You, you don't have any stalkers. You don't have any splash damage. And you don't have very much of a chance of dealing with that much Terran. I think Hero scouting the tech lab to factory and then just moving on kind of made him think it was a standard like 111 into tank uh, or at least just two barracks but the three racks with stim and combat shield quite a kicker it is one of those builds I think if you try it on the ladder you're just gonna run into uh, of course I'm gonna try it but you're just gonna run into players who uh, are extra defensive when they see multiple wrecks. Hero, it's one of those anti-high level players. The builds and the strategies that work against people who are smart. So I'm at no risk of finding those opponents, but uh, Oliveira here with what is clearly a well-practiced and well-prepared. And I wonder how long the, I believe the only Protoss he played before this point in the tournament was Neeb, who beat him two to one. I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, fun fact, if, if Neeb had won 2-0, it would be Neeb. Maybe not in the semifinals, but he would be the one in the playoffs, and Oliveira would have gone down. That's how close, but he's stepped it up. That's an understatement. He's taken an elevator to the penthouse. That's what he's done on this playoffs day and days so far. I Hero just looked lost. I'm, just, I'm very unused to seeing that. I've seen him take damage before, but I've I've almost never seen Hero just die. Like maybe a Widowmine gets a good hit, or uh, a Raven comes in at the wrong time, but never just straight up die. Ah, uh, okay, well, what about this time? A reset, Stargate on the way, a more middle of the road safe choice, pretty much all the time for Protoss. The probe did get out moments before the Marine, and importantly scouted the Marine, because that is a giveaway of information in and of itself. The Marine existing kind of precludes the Reaper, because you built a Marine first. It's very unlikely you'll build a Reaper afterwards, though occasionally it gets worked in. I'm very interested to see where both players go with it. Usually there's one player we focus on more with their build order there, and that's why, like, mostly Olivera, since it was the blank build we've seen before, but here comes Hero, adding an Oracle. This is, it just looks like this is the style. It isn't, like, a completely mind-blowing new unique thing, but he's definitely putting his own spin on it. The Cyclone, the choice, not going in the Widowmine drop, not adding a tank, 
it's just a cyclone and we'll see if he goes towards the uh, third racks and then a starport again or if he mixes it up but a gateway proxied this looks like the adept oracle combo the shade and spotlight or something more clever i come up with at a later time a rare build but if you don't have enough anti-air you can just die you lose all your marines the Cyclone. Well, the Cyclone's a big deal here. And the Cyclone slides up. If he kills the Oracle, that's that's a massive... No, no, no. Oh, my God. It's already badly bruised, which really blunts the potential of any sort of pressure. I take it back. It's not, it's not the early. I didn't notice the Twilight Council. So, my uh, missed call there. But the Twilight Council clearly for Blink and was already being produced uh, before the Oracle came across the map. But once again, I I question whether Blink is really going to be the option here. As the Oracle came in and it saw two wrecks, one with a tech lab upgrading. He has to know the same sort of unit composition is likely going to be available to Oliveira. But Hero, no Robo this time. He's using the Oracle. Well, he has the Oracle potentially for scouting. The Adept Shade is continually doing so. I believe he spotted the tank. Well, he certainly spotted the tank now. As Hero used this time to bring the Oracle in. And surprisingly, Oliveira has nothing there to defend. Actually, <laughs> Hero's maybe suspicious of a Widow Mine somewhere nearby. As doesn't stick around. A lock-on would almost certainly kill it as well. Cyclone adding a bit of extra damage here. And Oliveira. Coming across the map with a hefty Terran army. A lot of damage output. Oh, Medivac made its way out. Hero tried to intercept. He's going to intercept the reinforcement. Playing kind of like a Zerg here. And, I mean, we've been hyping up Bolivera, but Hero is dismantling this push. One Marine, a few SCVs at a time. Tank sieges, but retreats to the shield better. Hero has it at the front yet again. And this time, he slowed down the push enough that I think... Uh, Oliver has to be very careful about when he decides to commit. Two tanks. Stalkers on the back line. Oliver also trending towards caution here. Picks up the tanks and the medevac gets them out. The stalkers don't have quite enough damage to kill them that quickly, but... Oh, siege tanks in the center of the map trying to target fire down some of these stalkers. He, he kept swinging that tank turret around, looking for something. But Hero managed to close the distance inside the uh, minimum zone. And the Bling Stalkers are now stepping up the ramp. Is, that, is, there, is he dead? Ah, uh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, the tank? No, nope, he's dead. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> that, an abrupt transition into defeat. Neither of these players with much behind those initial attacks. And just like that, we're tied up 1-1. One one. Wow. Mm, what a tone shift. <laughs> From Rainer versus Oliveira. Even with the shorter games being kind of a back and forth slugfest. No. This is pretty much jousting until someone uh, gets decapitated here. And so far, 1-1. One one. Given as good as you got. Hero adjusted by not... Well, he didn't go for the Robo. The Stargate, I think it's perfectly okay to go Stargate. And even if you don't get much with it, the existence of the Oracle and the scouting information it provides, that is already incredibly helpful. Oh, Jimmy. Okay, thank you. I <laughs> thought we had uh, shifted the dimensions there, but... I, I'm, I'm really coming around. I didn't doubt the build to start, to be clear. I, I, it wasn't like, this is a dumb idea that should never work. No, it was just kind of a curious choice. Um, all right. Uh, interrupting your filler commentary for Hero just built, he's doing a max pack spin, right? Not quite, it's just a two gate. There's already a gateway back at home, the max packs build. Um, much like Max Packs, not making a showing at LAN tournaments lately. It's two gate stalker. Well, I, I'm being presumptuous with the stalkers, but usually 
There was no SCV scout here. Yeah, he's just now sending it after the barracks is already complete. So that's going to be quite a bit. Hero is making it look good. Oliveira just slaps on the command center, not bothering for a second to worry about uh, the probe being in the way. Brings down another. Okay. A little late. That Nexus should have started with potentially a pylon down there by now. The Nexus with a normal one gate expand build is before the command center of Terran. And he finds it immediately. Yep. Realizes uh, there's a lot of information already. Like that Nexus is delayed. Oh, wow. He's got a response mapped out here. Olivera came prepared. I. This. This strikes me as I know how to deal. Like, he went straight for it. He read it immediately. The Nexus timing and the lack of pylon. Also, the probe was a little sus. I'm not sure if the scouting timing was off, but that that much detail can be enough. And he built two Marines, didn't bother with the reactor. I think that's a very important part of this, is if he went for the reactor, he just wouldn't have had units. But now he has two Marines and a Reaper in the bunker. And oh my God, if he had, if Hero had been able to block that command center for even one or two more seconds, the Adept may have been able to delay it, essentially indefinitely. But now, uh, well, the, the Adepts don't do too much damage to the Depots. He's trying to bait it out. It only takes three Adept hits to kill a Reaper. He dodged one. If he can kill one of them, makes it a lot easier because he can no longer kill Marines in a single volley. But all of this... <gasps> oh, he waited until the split so How perfectly done! Oh, he's... He, he, he kind of deserved that one. Uh... <laughs> That was a bit much. More adepts coming across. I was totally wrong about the stalkers. Hero was just trying to get up in there. Of course, he did get scouted early on as well, but the cyclone is a big deal. The cyclone lock on. Don't need the upgrade to still do plenty of damage. Vision, of course, provided. And with the cyclone as the first choice here. One, in case there was a Stargate follow-up, he'd have the counter. It's going to be blank again. Hero loves, loves blank. And that somehow feels like an understatement. But uh, he is a huge fan of the Blink upgrade in every matchup, all of the time. And so far, three for three in this series, despite any sort of early game shenanigans. Ooh, Oliveira thought he might continue through on that one, especially with that many SCVs already badly bruised. Engineering Bay. He, he's kind of uh redirected his build back towards the same spot as uh, the other games we have uh, two going on three racks a delayed starport in favor of consolidating his production making sure he has uh his natural security Oliveira making the judgment call that uh even a raven i do think even with the uh change to the raven be cheaper the Raven just doesn't necessarily get the value early, unless you know for a fact they're going for, uh, like, a quick robo build or something. Uh, I, I really like... I'm, I'm more and more liking the extra barracks as just a default choice here. As that is the best way to deal with Blink Stalkers, because if you don't have enough units to deal with the critical mass of Blink Stalkers, it doesn't really matter too much how many medevacs you have. Good scan. Olivera sees... Twilight Council and a Robo, but no Robo Bay and gateways being added. How many? You only saw one of the gateways being added, so that might throw him off a bit. But should expect Blink, potentially a Warp Prism, and eventually more. But sitting back now, five more gates on the way for Hero. Really committing here. He does have that third, but Oliver actually has a few more workers. Remember, he got the command center earlier, and he, Hero has really been focused on, on pumping up his production as opposed to macroing in a typical sense. Right now, 
Nero is very much hoping Olivera moves out. And he can just essentially kill it all, ideally, with, with a bunch of charge lots, especially. He's keeping him busy. Like, if Olivera just thinks it's Blink Stalkers and he moves out just like this, and there's a dozen zealots with the army, he can get overrun quite easily. Adepts keeping things busy. He's been so diligent about scouting with the Adepts. Hero target firing into the natural. The Adepts taking a lot of damage from the siege tank, but get three SCVs and actually drag things back. But oh my god, Oliver got a single Marine. He saw the third, and he saw very importantly the gateways at the natural, which Hero. I can only imagine was trying to hide. And that means Oliver kind of sits back, takes a takes a beat, and realizes, wait a second here. Because those gateways, oh my god, he slides past and he gets, he gets the war prism, which was the biggest threat. Because now if he cleans up the zealots in the main, he can put everything together and go. All right, there's a third command center on the way. Olivera, unsieges, just now getting a Templar Archives as hero. Imagine for for Archons, but Storm could eventually be on the table. Oh, matter of fact, boost back just in time to avoid the Stalkers targeting it down. Oh, I gotta be very careful with those. Well, Templar Archives is not done yet. Hero doesn't really have money in the bank either. He built a lot of probes. Doesn't seem like he warped in everything he could have on cooldown. Losing that prism was a, a big part of this. Now Oliveira is able to lay on the pressure. And it was so important, he built another prism immediately. So much damage coming out. That prism will not be across the map in time. I don't know if Oliveira saw it for sure. Some charge lots of trying to work their way down before the tank siege. Plus one against no upgrades here. The tanks target fire into the stalkers, laying in that additional damage. Metavax almost out of energy, just healing through the stims. But Olivera, yeah, I'd say that's a win. And so would the statistics there. 16 zealots to 14 marines. And, oh my, that's a lot on the minimap. Is that what I think it is? The boys! He's pulled the boys! He saw the Templar Archives! He saw the Templar Archives! He's trying to pull the boys before- well, he saw the Archons as well, obviously. But, he's trying to get in before there can be a critical mass of Archons, or Storm, or really enough gateway units. The boys are on the front line, the probes are pulled in counter! The Liberators, a huge move here to add additional damage! And, and Hero is going- oh! 10 seconds, 15 seconds left! on storm not that i think there are any templar yeah he's forced to merge into archon but targeting down the pylon that powers four separate gateways and with it most of the production i think almost everything uh, back in in olivera's base has been cleaned up some badly bruised marauders and marines still do full damage the liberator unloading into immortals the units are thinning out, the SCVs are going down, but most of the SCVs going down are the ones that were pulled into the fray. And Olivera with one of the most decisive timings. I think he's broken him. And unlike against Raynor, he's going to be going up a game here. And put Hero onto match point. Yes, he continues sending units across the map. There's no coming back from this for Hero. It's just too much damage. Heroes scramble. There's nothing left. There's no amount of blink mic we're gonna solve the problem. He's just kind of processing the situation right now. That's far too much. Oliveira with a decisive SCV. He had a third command center. He had a third command center. Yet he made the call. I don't know if if that like if he took a third command center he'd get behind. But the judgment I think was. Heroes had a third for a while. He's probably in a decent economy. He's obviously teching up. If I go now, I can maybe overrun him before he has too much of that splash damage that I'm really not equipped to deal with. That was just the killer instinct there. Uh, I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, going into game four with Oliveira up two to one.
against the last Protoss in the World Championships, which would be devastating to see him go down. We want Hero versus Maru, Saral, anyone, but apparently Olivera is his match right now. Hero is predictable. He's gonna go blink. He's gonna rely on blink. And uh, while against um, against Zerg, you can usually defense yourself. Defense. Make expanded defense. But <laughs> you can usually defend yourself against early aggression with, with a few oracles and some well-placed shield batteries and pylons. Uh, against Terran, you have no such... such uh, <laughs> wow. English is hard. Olivera speaks better English than me. And more honestly, to be honest. <laughs> Ironically enough. Moving on. Like and subscribe. Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. Blink. Yes. Ah. Oracles just, especially with these cyclone openers that Olivera is doing, you cannot rely on the Stargate units. This probe has been very annoying. Uh, you can't rely on the Stargate units early on to protect you against essentially all forms of aggression. The bio-timing will easily overrun them. You either need well-controlled, efficient Twilight Council units uh, in the form of Blink, or um, essentially rushing to uh, Rubble Bay for usually Colossi. Disruptor is far from reliable. Especially after the nerf. Probe caught and killed by the Reaper. Search it, yeah. <laughs> After that last game, take a look around. Hero did build the uh, Reaper pylon wall. It's looking like a Stargate. No warp gate on the way yet. We are on Gresvin, which is the most popular map of the current pool. Reaper sees the Nexus finishing. The SCV already got some of this information. What is happening down here? Adept. I'm gonna use the Nexus, which the Reaper can technically... Ooh. Oh, that's not... Does still get away in time. Uh, thankfully for him. I was a bit distracted by the adept on the other side of the map. Phoenix on the Phoenix first, I say, uh, changing my tone as he changes from what you'd expect out of the Stargate. Against the Cyclone opener, I think the intent, try to pick off or at least negate the Cyclone with the Graviton lift and work from there. Phoenix is one of the most efficient units in the game if they're actually allowed to get anything going. Oh, SCVs. This is, uh... Kind of looked weird there for a second with two Adept Cyclones about to finish. Not risk anything. There are two badly hurt SCVs. Two Marines in that bunker right now, so... More Phoenix is being produced. It's going... Ah, stop right there, criminal scum. He does get the Reaper without having to use another lift. Oh, the Adept probably would have handled it anyways. But. Now we see. Is this it? This is the biggest adaptation the hero's made. It's kind of crazy that Hero is the one that has to adapt to Olivera's style. But here we are. It is kind of a fresh TVP style as well. Uh, with this kind of... Uh, bio shove that he's been leaning on as opposed to widow mine drops or, or early raven or banshee uh, just skipping the early starport entirely in favor of more barracks phoenix gets a good scout sees it's very similar to what he's seen before and this time robo bay going straight to colossus forge as well He's going to match the two base, I think, with the two base. Uh, at least focusing on teching up and getting enough units to compete as dancing around the problem with Blink Stalkers doesn't look like it's going to be the play. 
I think Hero's going to expand towards that uh, northern nexus as well. Getting as far away from Olivera and, and a push as possible. Phoenix is to the north, sliding back around, looking for an opportunity. If any we don't mind drop or uh, Raven happens to come out that way, of course. Be very convenient to catch it. That that's the break that Hero needs right now. Does he see the yeah. Observer spotted, of course. That gives the Phoenixes a little bit of space. Doesn't break the lock on the clone, but Phoenix gets away just barely in time, and that will send Olivera out with 16 Marines and two Manavacs. He knows the Phoenixes are on the opposite side of the map. Uh, I don't think there was a backup observer to spot this or anything. There is a spotter adept that just... Oh, it's moving into position. He has to realize that medevacs are an option. And at this point, Hero, I think, may be a little suspicious of where they are. They're taking the long, long scenic path to the southern part of Gresvin here. Infantry le weapons level one. Hero is kind of taking a look around. A bit suspicious, clearly. The adept spots the medevacs. He just boosts towards the main, though. Phoenix is recalled back. Those aren't going to be enough to stop the Marines. And it's already too late. They're already unloading. Get one of the Phoenixes. Where is the Colossus? You can see on the minimap, Olivera moving in. Targets down the battery. And with it, uh, several more stalkers. Might get a Phoenix or two. Here's the Colossus. So many probes have already died, though. More Phoenix. The Colossus is going the wrong way. He was losing so many probes in the Nexus over here. Widowmines out of position. Well, maybe in position. He manages to burrow them. Gonna target the Nexus. And the Widowmines target fire the Colossus and knock out two sentries alongside it. The Widowmines added in for the first time in this series. SCV also wanted to document. And with them, wow, he loses his sentries. The Colossus softened up, and Hero, he did no counter damage besides the handful of SCVs that were killed by the Phoenixes. Eight SCVs, 13 probes in total, but the thing is Olivera killed economy and units. He got a bunch of the Phoenixes, he got a Colossus, he got sentries. Trying to blink in with the War Prism here, one way or another. Gonna finish off that last Phoenix. Oh, uh, the Widow Mine targeted onto the Immortal. It should have targeted the, the Stalker, but Olivera slickly targeting the Immortal there. A trail of dangerous, painful breadcrumbs. This time, he's not able to get the target fire on the Widow Mine, but he's already softened up this attack so much. Hero is the one in a desperate situation. Oh, ho, ho, dodges with the mine. Unburrows. Viking is out. Oh, stims everything. But wisely sits back. Golovar realizes Hero is desperate to get damage, so he's going to let him wash up against this bunker if possible. Force field doesn't really seem to do anything there, as all the SCVs are still repairing. Stimming forward, the Viking targets down the prism. The Marines split, they stim. The Colossus on the back line, not nearly enough. The Marauders and Marines are stimming forward. Colossus is knocked to the ground. Another one is following up, lost, alone, and now dead. Just like Hero's chances of seeing a Protoss as the world champion. He's got a disruptor and a dream, but honestly more like a nightmare. And much like Nightmare, looking like he's going to get knocked out. Olivera at 50 SCVs, more than Hero. 60 army supply to, to 20. Disruptor gets a decent hit. Shield battery overcharged. Blink is on the way, but far from done. The medevacs can outheal the shield battery. Though no, they're gonna back off for a moment. Hero waiting for that disruptor to cool down or heat up. I'm not sure which one it is. A single Colossus pops out. Shield battery overcharge is gone. 
Widow Mine knocks out the Zealot. Overcharge. Oh, he tar the Disruptor. He micros away. Drops back out on top of the Colossus. Knocks it to the ground. The Stalkers, no energy on the shield battery. Hero desperate. The Zealots are slow, sad, and barely able to get anywhere before the concussive shells make them a prime target. G! G! Well played! Respect! for Olivera, who's going to the Grand Finals to fight for the World Championship. Upsetting upset for Brotas players out there, but Olivera truly earned this one. He beat Rayner in a straight-up reverse sweep. He made mistakes, but not enough. And here, even the game he lost uh, had a clear methodology behind it. Olivera's bio shove and his timing as well as the decisive pulling of the boys, just should be inspirational for Terrans out there. Hero, I think, got kind of caught in a one-track mindset. And Oliver just derailed him. <sighs> well, that sets us up. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you tune in as well for my coverage of the, the Grand Finals. It's going to be Oliver versus... I think it's Maru. Uh... And, well, I hope I made your day a little bit better. Jimmy will put up a video for you that'll hopefully, I uh, hope you enjoy, though. Hard to top this. Uh, like, subscribe, good luck, have fun. I'll see you next time. Stay chill.